हेलो स्टूडेंट्स एज वी ऑल नो फार्माको काइनेटिक्स इज द स्टडी ऑफ एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन मेटाबॉलिज्म एंड एक्सक्रीशन ऑफ ड्रग बाय द बॉडी इन दिस वीडियो वी विल ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ ड्रग डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एंड फैक्टर्स अफेक्टिंग डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ ड्रग इन द बॉडी Now this video is fourth in the series of videos on pharmacokinetics. Now look at this diagram. This diagram is depicting schematic representation of drug distribution. Now as we all know that once a drug is administered in the body, the drug is absorbed in the systemic circulation. Now this box represents systemic circulation that is the blood in red color. now once the drug is absorbed the drug is present in the blood now very important we should know that blood is termed as a vascular tissue as the blood is confined in the blood vessels or the blood flows in the blood vessels now tissues other than the blood all the tissues other than the blood are termed as extra vascular tissues and similarly fluid other than the blood in the body is termed as extra vascular fluid now this systemic blood which contains the drug it circulates throughout the body and thus it distributes the drug thus distribution is the movement of drug from the systemic circulation to the extra vascular fluids and the body tissues now very important in the blood are present plasma proteins now most of the drugs bind reversibly to these plasma proteins and the percentage of drug that binds to these proteins varies from drug to drug so now in the systemic blood or now in the systemic circulation the drug is present in two forms one is a free drug and the other is the drug that is bound to the plasma protein now it is a free drug that is distributed to the extra vascular tissues and the fluids now as the plasma concentration of the free drug falls more and more free drug is released from the protein bound drug now as discussed earlier free drug is distributed throughout the extra vascular tissues and the fluids now these two boxes in yellow color represents extra vascular tissues and the fluids now drug is distributed to the site of action where it binds to the receptors and produce the therapeutic effect now drug is also distributed to other tissues and organs like for example brain heart liver kidneys lungs muscles adipose tissues bones etc now very important to remember that this distribution of drug throughout the body is not uniform because different tissues receive the drug from the plasma at different rates and to different extents now in the tissues are also present proteins and these proteins are called as a tissue proteins and therefore in the tissues also the drug exists in the free form and also in the bound form that means some of the drug binds to the proteins in the tissues now initially uh, the plasma contain uh, the entire drug so as the plasma contains the drug movement of drug from the plasma to the extra vascular tissue continues until an equilibrium is established between the free drug in the plasma and free drug in the tissue fluids as uh, depicted here uh, in this diagram this shows the equilibrium now metabolism and excretion of the drug also occurs simultaneously along with the distribution and this makes the entire process highly complex uh, now let's uh, understand factors affecting distribution of drugs one by one now first is the lipid solubility of drug now lipophilic drugs uh, these are the fat soluble drugs they easily pass through the cell membranes as the cell membranes are made up of phospholipids so these lipophilic drugs are widely distributed in the body's extra vascular tissues for example thiopentone thiopentone is highly lipid soluble and therefore it is widely distributed in the extra vascular tissues on the contrary water loving or hydrophilic drugs they do not penetrate through the lipid bilayer of the cells and therefore they remain confined to the blood plasma 
For example, gentamicin, streptomycin. Now, second important factor on which distribution depends is the binding of drug to plasma proteins and to the tissue proteins. Now, plasma proteins are present in the plasma that is in the blood whereas the tissue proteins are present in the extravascular tissues. Now, drugs like amphetamine, meperidine are extensively bound to tissue proteins uh, that means the proteins that are present in the extravascular tissues and thus these drugs are widely distributed in the extravascular tissues while the drugs like uh, warfarin, aspirin, these are largely plasma protein bound drugs and therefore they are restricted to the blood plasma. Third important factor is the ionization. Now very important to remember that non-ionized drugs are lipid soluble. Uh, they easily cross the cell membranes so they reach the extravascular tissues. While the ionized drugs are water soluble, they do not cross the cell membranes and therefore they remain within the plasma. So non-ionic drugs like digoxin, fentanyl pass through the phospholipid cell membrane and are widely distributed in the extravascular tissues while highly ionized drugs like gentamicin, neostigmine, they remain confined to the blood plasma. Now another very important factor is the vascularity of tissues that is uh, blood flow, supply of blood to the tissues. Now organs that are richly supplied with the blood that is highly perfused are brain, heart, kidneys, livers, liver and lungs. Now skin and muscles are supplied with moderate amount of blood flow and are thus moderately perfused while fatty tissue or the adipose tissue is poorly perfused. It has poor supply of blood flow. Now remember that more is the supply of blood to an organ, better is the distribution of drug. So uh, highly lipid soluble drugs are rapidly distributed to highly perfused organs uh, as these organs receive fastest supply of drug followed by distribution of drug to moderately perfused organ and distribution of drug is slowest to the adipose tissue as it has poor blood supply. Thus highly lipid soluble drugs get initially distributed to the organs with high blood flow. Uh, now let's understand the concept of redistribution of drugs. Now let's take the example of a drug that is the thiopentone sodium. Now thiopentone sodium is a general anesthetic and it is administered by the intravenous route so that it is injected directly in the bloodstream. Now this thiopentone sodium is highly lipid soluble and since brain is a highly vascular organ as we have uh, just uh, discussed. Uh, so thiopentone sodium from the blood is immediately distributed to the brain and it produces general anesthesia because brain is the site of action of thiopentone sodium. Now subsequently within few minutes thiopentone sodium is withdrawn from the brain and it reaches back to the blood plasma. So this movement of drug, this movement of thiopentone sodium from blood to the brain is termed as distribution while the movement of thiopentone from the brain back to the blood is termed as the redistribution. And further, thiopentone is redistributed from the blood to the muscles and adipose tissue. So this is the redistribution of thiopentone sodium. Now, for complete understanding of redistribution process, you can refer to my video on redistribution of drugs pharmacokinetics part 5. Now the fifth factor responsible for the distribution of drug is the passage of the drug across the blood barriers. Now two most important blood barriers that prevent passage of drugs and the toxic substances through them are the blood brain barriers and the blood cerebrospinal fluid barrier. Now these two barriers they keep the brain safe, safe from the toxic substances safe from the drugs. Now blood vessels or the capillaries in the brain possess very tight junctions 
and they are in turn covered by the highly lipid membrane. Thus, blood brain barrier and blood cerebrospinal fluid barrier are highly lipoidal barriers. And therefore, only highly lipid soluble drugs can pass through these barrier and can reach the brain. Now, apart from this, uh, P glycoprotein and uh, organic anion transporting polypeptides are the transporters uh, that are present in the brain. Now these transporters pump out all the foreign substances like for example drugs, toxic substances from the brain and the cerebrospinal fluid. Thus these transporters protect the brain from the toxic substances and also from the excess entry of drugs. So, this is in brief on the distribution and factors affecting distribution of drug in the body. Now, if you find the video useful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.